Finally, some sunshine and some warm weather. Let's get started on this here, on this beautiful, beautiful afternoon. We got some uh, warm weather and sunshine, getting past all the cold, coming into the summer months. Looks like spring is finally here. You gotta love it. Today, what are we talking about? Well, we'll start off with 10 reasons. And you might say 10 reasons for what? 10 reasons every man should date a woman who thinks she's a princess. That's right. Everyone needs a princess. Okay, let's see what she's got. I didn't wake up with a tear on my head, and I don't own designer everything. I don't show up at the gym in fully made up face. But I'm kind of a princess. Not a princess in a royal way, but a princess in the I like to make sure everything is taken care of, and that I show up looking well put together way. A princess in I like to make a statement and match while I do it way. A princess in that I don't do things halfway. Instead, I go all the way. Yeah, I see that too right there. That looks uh, how to make them worship you. Maybe they'll be the next video. Here are 10 reasons every man should date a woman who thinks she's a princess. Number one, they're extremely detail-oriented. In fact, or the fact is, you might say, I'm a princess. But I'll say, it's not that I'm a princess, but that I pay attention to detail. There's beauty in the details, and when someone pays attention to all the nooks and crannies, it means she cares. Or she's OCD. Your girlfriend in jogging pants and tank top may be able to breezily make plans with you, but I'm, I'm there getting the 411. If that makes me a princess, well then, hand me my ball gown, I'm ready. Number two, they never wear yoga pants outside of the gym. I understand other people like to wear yoga pants everywhere, and that's cool. I don't care what you wear, really. Although I did have a friend show up at, to a party of mine in yoga pants. I admit, I didn't think it was, uh, it was odd. But some people like to be comfortable 24-7, and that's okay for them. I'm not one of these people. I wear yoga pants at the gym. I wear yoga pants to the jog. I wear regular clothes in public and to the store. And if I'm out, I dress up. Perhaps this is because I never got to wear super frilly dresses as a kid. But this is, but this junior queen believes in cleaning up nicely and unless she's sweating up a storm. So sue me. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I did mention in a previous podcast how a woman will take some time getting dressed up and you'll see her on a date with some guy in board shorts and a t-shirt he looks ratty as hell and she looks uncomfortable because she took the time to look nice and he didn't do anything now for some guys that might work i get it but come on guys you, we got to look good ourselves now i'm not saying we have to spend as much uh, time as miss ocd here but uh you know you need to keep yourself neat and clean and have some good grooming habits that's uh, definitely something to have number three they color coordinate every single part of their wardrobe I'm type A and organized. So if you check out my closet, you'll notice it's organized by item and color. My outfits also, for the most part, have to match, including my bag and coat. It's not being a princess, it's being symmetrical. Symmetry and color coordination are two different things. She must be blonde. Plus, whenever I see a woman pulling off a mixed pattern of colors, pattern and colors I'm in awe it's like hot hippie chick I can't do that don't kill me if my polish matches my sweater that's the attention to detail thing obsessive number four they stay far away from dirt and creepy crawlies I save the dirt for the dirty jokes this doesn't mean I won't run outdoors hike or go for bike ride this doesn't mean I don't like animals I love cats and dogs and sometimes snakes, but keep the snakes at your house. It means I won't be the friend signing up for the mud run. It means if I go camping, it's because the man is hot, and that's why. So Brad Pitt, if you called, I'll join you. 
right there she just set up what her ideal alpha male looks like brad pitt she wants that chiseled look the six-pack abs she has that brad pitt in her mind if you don't measure up to that guys you're out right uh tomasi says you know they make rules for the for the betas and they break rules for the alphas and unless you're brad pitt you're not an alpha if it crawls and it belongs in a horror movie i want you to kill it i can't help it i've had nightmares about spiders since i was a little kid if you're the person saving bugs to return them to their natural environments i commend you that however isn't me here again she wants to be that uh strong independent woman but loses it when there's a spider crawling across the floor number five they like dive bars but don't ask them to go to the buffet i love a nice cocktail lounge but you'll find me comfortable and happy in a dive bar and maybe a tad overdressed nothing better than a good rock band at a dive bar of course don't try and take me to the chinese food buffet all I'm thinking of as I look inside that buffet is how the Greeks used to eat until they puked. And the bacteria forming on the Kung Pao chicken just might be lethal. Thanks, but no thanks. All right, it was the Romans that had the vomitoriums and not the Greeks. And here again, I've eaten at a lot of Chinese food buffets and I've never had an issue whatsoever. I wonder what type of buffet she chooses. Number six, they don't care if you're not rich, but don't be cheap. I don't need a rich guy. My one love was not a wealthy man by any means. That said, man manage whatever money you do have, whether it's 60K or 100K, and don't be cheap. Now, notice her wording here. My one love was not a wealthy man. That means her one love is not in her life anymore was past tense can anybody guess maybe oh i don't know why he's not in her life anymore maybe 60 to 100 thousand reasons yeah yeah that's what i thought no it doesn't mean dinner dinners out have to be five-star restaurants but it does mean making effort and occasionally splurging as I'll splurge on my partners and never buy cheap chocolate. That's just tacky. Number seven, they don't want to be showered with affection. Oh, I'm sorry. They want to be showered with affection. I don't, I don't want to be ignored and I like the affection of my man. It could be worse. I could be frigid and unresponsive, but this queen doesn't hold back with her warmth as much as she requires yours. So, okay, she requires yours. So I'm saying she's probably a very clingy type person. And she's probably always looking for validation. Uh, if you don't wake up and give her a kiss in the morning, or you don't, you know, touch the back or the small of her back every once in a while, or you don't, she'll start questioning what's going on. Is he cheating on me? Did he lose my love? What, what, he doesn't like me anymore. Maybe these jeans make me look bad but they match my sweater. Number eight, they're crazy neat. I remember getting a grass stain on my jeans as a child and asking my mother, will this come out in the wash? And she assured me it would, but I wasn't happy until my favorite jeans came out of the wash, grass stain free. Something tells me she would probably see like a small residue and that's probably what's driving her crazy even to her adulthood. I'm neat. Maybe this is due to the fact that my father obsessively picked lint off my clothes. Maybe it's due to the fact that my mother is a neat freak. Either way, I like to look presentable. It's all a part of how to be a princess. Taking pride in one's looks. Nothing wrong with that. Now, being obsessive about it. Yeah. Number nine. They love jeans, but they also love dressing fancy. Yes, I love jeans, especially skinny jeans. They're my absolute favorite wardrobe staple, second to the perfect summer dress. High heels, dresses, the colors pink and red, the ultimate red lipstick. These are things I love. Maybe I was a queen in a past life, but I can't help 
but like a li I, I can't help but like a bit girly. Maybe I can blame my father who was uh, who has worked in fashion for years. So I, in turn, grew up amongst clothing racks. Besides, what blonde can't rock a shade of pink or red? It's in the rule book for blondes. I had a feeling she was a blonde. And no, I didn't read down this far on this article. I just kind of knew it. It's intuitive. Number 10. They're a bit high maintenance. I'm more high maintenance than the girl next door. But I'm not a snob. Nor am I looking to score a guy for his money. In fact, this princess likes making her own money and being her own woman. Strong independent. You go, girl. That said, don't be afraid of dating a woman who might be sleeping with a tiara on. We're enthusiastic, hardworking, detail-obsessed, and very passionate. And as much as we love to be spoiled with your attention and squeezed, we're just as willing to shower our shower our attention onto you and perhaps even your body if you're lucky a man who loves a princess will never go to bed cold okay we're just as willing to shower our attention on you and perhaps even your body in other words maybe maybe if you're lucky if you do everything I want you to do in my OCD, over-obsessed way of doing things, you know, I mean, she talks about obsessing about herself, but how far, how long until that's turned on to you? If you're dating this woman and she's that obsessed, you know, I mean, are you going to come walking out? And she's going to be like, you're not wearing those shoes or those pants, are you? Yeah, I am. Starts with little steps. It's always, always, always little steps. That's the thing that you, you, you've got to really watch out for is all the little things that goes on. A lot of times it isn't the big things. It's always the little things that lead to the big things. Speaking of leading to the next thing, shady dating. Now this is a, probably a good follow-up to Miss OCD. Because this is where this can lead, is cushioning as toxic as it sounds. The shady dating trend, shady dating trend explained. <sighs> We're sending emails until 6 p.m., spinning on our stationary bikes when we get home, throwing together a dinner, calling back mom, and trying to stay awake for our, retality, our rea reality TV ritual before bed. We barely have time to date one person. But there are some super daters among us who can balance multiple coffee chats, jaunts around town, and late night texts with ease. Called cushioning, this dating trend involves chatting with several partners at once to cushion the blow of a potential breakup. Okay, so she's starting off right away with the fact that she's going to break up. Right? So she's got to have multiple people. And I do have a, uh, a video on... While this one woman needed multiple sexual partners, but so here, I'm not saying she does, but what I'm saying is that she's looking at multiple dating, multiple people. Now let's flip that script a little bit. What happens if a man wants to date multiple women, spending some plates? Hmm? What do they call them? A player, um, indecisive, uh, you're afraid of committal. But when a woman's doing that, no, 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 no. That's just because I just want to cushion myself from the blow. Too much soft talk here. Okay, she likes the attention. She likes having multiple dinners bought for her. She likes the validation. It's all that's about. She'll say she's cushioning a blow, but it's all about the validation. Uh, let's see here. Called cushioning. The staying train involves chatting with several partners at once to cushion the blow of a potential breakup. You may, you might know cushioning in a committed, re, in a committed relationship by its other name, cheating. Well, okay, at least they're honest about that. But what about approaching cushioning in a new relationship when dating around is more permissible? Below, we ask three relationship experts. Oh God, when it is and isn't healthy to cushion, plus how to bring up 
bring it up with a new partner. Okay, she flat out knows what it is. She said this is cheating, right? But there's a difference between uh, being in a relationship and dating around. And uh, this is probably where her confusion is, right? It's if you're dating around, yes, it's, you know, unless you're saying you're somehow exclusive to each other, you're dating, that's fine. But she's like, when you're in a new relationship, that's cheating. And that's the thing. Women will con confuse this, right? Men, if we're dating around, men will be like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm dating multiple women. That's fine. But when we're in a relationship, we're dating one person and that's it. There's the difference. Now she's confused this, but I think most women do confuse it because women have a hard time, unlike men, dating multiple people because their feelings get involved. That's right, the feelings. They confuse their feelings with the situation. Men do not do this. Wait, what exactly is cushioning? Cushioning is an emotional safety net meant to shield us from the impact of dating unknowns. Winter shares in a recent YouTube video. Who's Winter? Did I miss something? Is that the name of the... Oops. No? That's not the article uh, author. Okay. What if my date ghosts me after four dates? Well, you were uh, probably never serious about you in the first place. It was probably just a smash and grab. And, uh, or you're insufferable. One of the two. Will my current partner and I recover from a major disagreement? God, I'd hope so. What if my ex thinks if she knows I'm single? What if my ex thinks if she knows I'm single? Rather than falling headfirst into loneliness and uncertainty, the Kushner has a, re <laughs> a reserve of romantic interest waiting to catch them before they reach the ground. No. Okay, that's women, for one. <laughs> okay, p women have always got orbiters. They're always just waiting. They're just waiting. They call themselves friends, but they're orbiters. All right, and she knows this. And if uh, she's making certain that she has these, she's just waiting a monkey branch. That's all there is to it, you know. Someone who cushions Cushions aims to keep their opinions or options open by overlapping people, monkey branching. Hey, and then swing out and get the next one. <sighs> Rather than openly addressing problems or reflecting on how they might have been a better partner, Winter says Kushners cycle from one person to the next to avoid any post breakup alone time. All right, here's the issue with this person, right? They uh, are very codependent is what this is. They can't be not in a relationship. They have to be in a relationship or else they don't know what to do with themselves. They feel, you know, the validation, everything goes out the window right there. They cannot spend time alone and reflect on themselves saying, what did I do wrong? What was happening in this relationship? What did I do? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No reflection whatsoever. This is something, yeah, women just don't want to do this. They don't want to sit here and actually take accountability for their actions and what they've done and what they might have uh, done differently, not done. I mean, it's, yeah, anyways. Let me continue. Yikes. Might someone cushion, or why might someone cushion? When someone cushions within an ex uh, exclusive couple, Ego and fear are their main drivers. No one wants to be dumped, rejected, or made to feel like last priority, says Winters, or Winter. To ensure a person's self-esteem isn't bruised by a difficult split, they might cushion to renew their confidence with a new fling or two. Online perception is a big piece, of, uh, big piece here too, says Johnson. I love how this person jumps between without any introductions of who is what. For adults of, of the social media generation, 
where their sense of self is determined and valued by likes, follows, and general external validation, meaning a cushioner gets a boost from others checking out their date night photos on Instagram, no matter how the relationship is functioning on the inside. All right, let's let's uh, deconstruct this a little bit here. No one wants to be dumped, rejected, or made uh, made to feel like a last priority, says Winters. To ensure a person's self-esteem isn't bruised by a difficult split. Okay, so this is a person who has uh, very little self-awareness and has not reflected upon what they're doing in their life. They haven't sat down and figured out who they are, and they haven't figured out what it is that they actually want. They're just sort of floating through life, right? We've seen this lots of lots and lots of time. Um, they're the people, oh, it'll just all work out. Things will work out, but you have to have a plan and a direction for things to work out, right? You have to know where you're heading, where you're going. This person here, talking about uh, self-esteem isn't uh, bruised by a difficult split. It should be bruised. It should hurt. Okay, this is how you learn. We we basically we're apes. We learn um, by through difficult actions and through that that difficulty and that pain. We learn. Okay, I don't necessarily want to go through that again, right? So, what is she doing? She's trying to avoid all that because she doesn't want to feel that. She only wants the good things. Well, when you want only the good things, when you get a little bad or something in your life, it just knocks the wind out of you because you did not take the time to learn the lessons there. You did not take the time to go ahead and, and self-reflect on what happened. So yeah, yeah, I can see how this uh, this person is just totally avoiding any kind of pain or any type of anything is avoiding all the lessons. And they And if you keep avoiding it, you'll never learn. No wonder they have to cushion. Uh, all right. We can't fall in love without surrender. Given a part of ourselves to another person, accepting we might get hurt. But Winters explains that in, explains in the Kushner's case, their capacity to love cannot tolerate, tolerate risk or love or risk or loss. This fear holds the dater back from the real lasting partnership instead of deeply struggling to protect yourself. She advises learning to relinquish control and building your communication skills so you can work through relationship bumps that arise. Yeah, like I said, you got to go through it. Okay, you got, even if you rip the Band-Aid, there's still some pain. And she just, she didn't even want the Band-Aid. She just wants her, everything to be unicorns and granola. And that's just not the way life is. We didn't make it to be the apex creature on this planet by not going through some pain. Is cushioning ever okay? We know cushioning is sounding more toxic by the second. Damn right it is. But Trombetti, this, this must be our third expert here, says it's useful when we're initially seek, seeking out a partner. The matchmaker green lights dating others within the first 60 days of a new relationship saying it offers us a chance to examine our feelings and observe if this person is capable and willing to meet our needs such as commitment lifestyle and investment of time well okay here again if you're just dating okay you you're if you're dating and you're spinning multiple plates okay i understand this right but is are these women doing that? I mean, their their body counts are getting higher and higher and higher. And so what they're saying is, here I've got, I'm getting, uh, you know, I'm getting some pipe one night. And then, you know, two nights later, I'm getting it over here from this guy. And I'm getting it from that guy. And they, they keep going around there. But are they sitting here doing what this person says? Examining our feelings and observing if this person is capable and willing to meet our needs, such as commitment, lifestyle, and investment of time. No, they're not. Okay, they're not going to do that until they start hitting around 30 and realizing that, uh, uh, you know, all that years of partying, they're not doing so well. Their SMV is shot out the window. 
And then all of a sudden, what happens? They realize that they cannot compete with their 23-year-old self. Thank you, Tomasi. And they start panicking. This is what they should have been doing in the beginning. They hadn't been lied to and told to have plenty of time. Then things would look a lot different for them. Let's see, where were we? Uh, the learnings that emerge when dating that you hate when somebody talks over you or once someone who cares about your dog lead us to discover the type of person we'd like to link with long term this healthy exploration keeps us from lending too much or leading too much with our hearts and help us secure the most uh, compatible relationship advises trombetti okay so he, here's the thing feels before reels right so if this person is leading with their feelings and that's all they've ever done because they don't want to get the feeling of hurt, right? What this person here is saying is, no, you need to stop the feelings and you need to start thinking an objective uh, process of, is this the kind of person that I want to be with? Is this the kind of person? But women don't do that. Here again, feels before reels. They're going to feel this thing out. And as long as they get the butterflies and everything's all, is, is all just, you know, tingly, um, they'll continue with it and not give a second thought to objectively looking for a partner. The only acceptable way to cushion is to comp is complete transparency. Per Johnson, this sounds like I'm focused on finding a long-term partner. So I'm openly dating around until I find someone I feel, feel super comfortable with. I'm happy to answer questions you may have about that and would love to know how you're going about dating. Okay, so we're back to feeling super comfortable or compatible with, sorry, not comfortable, compatible with. And I'm happy to answer your question. So, yes, if you're going to spin plates, be upfront and honest about it. Don't sit there and say, you know, oh no, you're the only one. No, be completely open and honest about it. Guys, that that's not going to bother us. It's like, okay, if you want to go ahead and date, you go ahead and date. I'm dating too. Now, that might set up a little competition anxiety with her, especially if she feels that she really likes you a lot. Um, so she feels super compatible, as, as this person says here. Um, and that might start turning things in the right direction, if that's what you're looking for. If you're out spinning plates and you're just dating, be open and honest about it, 100%. 100%. So, uh, let's see here. Why is it so detrimental to relationships? Because you're not in one. If you're just dating around, you're not in a relationship. If you're in a relationship, now, as you said it before, you are cheating. Hey, okay? they need to get this straight in their head. No wonder they confuse themselves so much. They think just a date is a relationship. It's not. Uh, we can all agree cushioning within a committed monogamous relationship constitutes cheating. There we go. But even before you both had the ex uh, exclusivity talk, cushioning can hinder your chances at deep connection. By cushioning beyond the two-month mark of a relationship, uh, Trombetti says, you're hurting yourself and your new partner. While you might say you want commitment, this behavior communicates the opposite. Exactly. Exactly. It does. Um... I'm not going to go through this whole thing. You can start seeing. Uh, I'll put the link well, we're towards the end anyways. Uh, real quick, how can we steer clear of Kushner's? Bring up commitment within the first few weeks of a relationship can feel daunting. You can ask, what are we during a large, hard round of bowling? <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> it might as well say, hey, when are we going to get married and have kids? Right? It's like... <laughs> Straighten out your own thoughts. If you really like that person, then don't sit there. Ladies, don't sit there and cushion and date multiple people if you really think that this person is somebody that you want to be uh, actively pursuing and want them pursuing you. You know, focus all your attention on that one person if that's what uh, feels right for you. Guys, if you find out, let's put it this way. Guys, if you think this is a good person, this is the person you want, then make sure if she's cushioning, 
get the hell out right then and there. Right? Sit there and say, hey, you know, uh, I'd like some exclusivity. And if she's, well, I'm not too sure, to, out. Leave. Don't worry about it. Find the next one. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? When dating outlooks come up, you can share your, you're looking for a long-term partner. Lay out your wants and needs in a relationship. Doesn't mean, doesn't have to mean you've decided you want these things with them. Depends on how it's brought up. It'll scare the hell out of most guys. But I will say, if they're just there for a smash and grab, um, yeah, they'll get out of there pretty soon. Or they'll immediately agree with you and um, do the smash and grab and then ghost you. So, anyways. Ah, cushioning. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Now we're looking at... Yep, you guessed it. Matrix update. You're gonna this one. This one shocked me. This one really, really shocked me. Um, I have to sit there and say, I, like, just really, seriously. Former Paralympian tells MP Veterans Department offered her assisted death. Yeah, assisted death. Retired Corporal Christine Gunther. I think that's how you say her last name. No disrespect said the department even offered to provide the equipment. You go, this is just like, wow. A paraplegic former member of the Canadian military shocked MPs on Thursday by testifying that the Department of Veterans Affairs offered her, in writing, the opportunity for a medically assisted death and even offered to provide the equipment. Retired Corporal Christine uh, Gautier, maybe it's Gautier, who competed for, uh, for Canada in the 2016 Rio de Janeiro Paralympics and the Invictus Games that same year, spoke before the House of Commons Veterans Committee and agreed to provide a copy of the letter. With respect to me, I have a letter in my file because I had to face that as well, said Gautier. Uh, referring to the debate about veterans being offered the option of medical assistance in dying, made. Okay. And what was she asking for? I have a letter saying that if you're so desperate, madam, we can offer you made medical assistance in dying. Said, I keep betraying her name, so I'm just going to stop. Who first injured her back in a training accident in 1989. Testifying in French, she said she had been fighting for a home wheelchair ramp for five years and expressed her concern about the assisted dying offer in recent letter to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. She was trying to get a wheelchair ramp at her residence. But instead, they said, hey, how about if we just off you? Instead, if you're, if you're doing that bad, you can't get up into your place. Well, just how about you just, just go ahead and take yourself out. Yeah. This is like, this is an option. All she was looking for was a ramp for the past five years. And she was in her military and she served in her military and they can't get her a ramp in her house. But, you know, we'll, we'll give you, we'll give the equipment to, uh, to go ahead and end yourself instead. How's that? Um, she did not say, did not say when the assisted death offer was made, whether it came from a case manager or a veteran service agent, or when she wrote to the prime minister. On Friday, Prime Minister, uh, minister Justin Trudeau called the report of what happened to her absolutely unacceptable and said the government took action the moment it heard of, uh, of other cases. So uh, right there, he's saying other cases. So that means this is not the first time. What they're saying is, you know, why don't we just end your life so we can, don't have to sit there and take care of you. Quote, we are following up with investigators and are changing protocols to ensure that, to ensure what should seem obvious to all of us, that this is not the place of Veteran Affairs Canada, who are supposed to be there to support those people who stepped up to serve their country to offer them medical assistance in dying. 
Veterans Minister Lawrence McAuley revealed last week in testimony before the same committee that four, perhaps five, cases of Canadian military veterans being given the MAID option by now suspended veteran service agents have been uh, referred to the RCMP, whatever that is in Canada. <sighs> McAuley urged other veterans who have who may have had similar experiences to come forward. So this is what this is what's happening out there that people think uh, that you might as well just, hey, you know, you've uh, served the country. Thank you. Uh, oh, you uh, have a permanent situation in your life, in this case, paralyzed from the, the waist down. Here, we'll just go ahead and off you. Thanks. This is what it's coming down to. It, it, it didn't even come to common sense to whoever offered this to this person that by reading her case, they weren't looking for, you know, assistance in offing themselves. They were looking for a ramp to get into their house or apartment. I mean, just, that's just, that just stuns me. How can anybody just, you know, offer that up like that? I, I just, I, I'm just dumbfounded on this. I really am. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll put the link down below if you want to read the rest of the story. It's, it's, it's appalling. It really, really is appalling on this, that they just think that that's what she was, uh, you know, that's what she was looking for. Oh, if you're that bad off, they said, you know, if you're that bad off, uh, why don't you just go ahead and just off yourself? Yeah. How's that? It's, uh, I, I don't understand it. It's absolutely just dumbfounding. Really, really is dumbfounding on this. Um, interested in your thoughts? Leave uh, some thoughts below. Uh, please uh, share and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Um, I mean, this is what's uh, in store for all of us. You know, instead of retiring, hey, you know, if you're that, that bad off with your retirement, how about if we just go ahead and yeah, we'll assist you in offing yourself? How's that? That, that'll solve all the problems. It'll solve our problems too. That way we don't have to take care of you anymore. You've, uh, we've used you and, uh, you know, we'll just take your body and probably recycle it out in the forest and grow a tree out of it or something of that nature. Anyways, uh, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this day if I can after reading that one. So, Hey, thank you all for joining me. Appreciate it. They like said, don't forget to, uh, to like subscribe and we'll talk to you soon.